Okay, apparently we are live. How is everyone doing? If uh, if you're in the chat, hello, welcome. Let me know if you can hear me. And we will begin shortly. We'll just wait for a few people to get in. Um, so as you can see by the title, if you are here today, we're going to be looking at two watches that recently came in. I did show them on uh, yesterday's uh, live stream on Instagram. Uh, sorry, I'm just a bit distracted. There's a squirrel playing around in the garden and it's literally jumping around and rolling around on the floor. Um, <laughs> so let's let's get on with this and not be distracted by squirrels. That's probably a good start. Uh, so, hope you're all doing well. Today is one of those days where I woke up and you know when you wake up with a headache and you're just not feeling it and you're just not feeling the day and you've got a couple of plans and you don't really do them and you miss the first few and then that's it the day's pretty much out the window <laughs> that was today but i didn't want to uh to let that affect this i wanted to continue to bring the live stream today so we will do it quick wristwatch check i am wearing the i think i've got the angle completely wrong today it looks a bit different uh i'm wearing the gakota today on wrist Cool watch. I've just started the chronograph, so I'll be able to keep track of how long we've been live on my wrist. There we go. Chronographs in use. That is how it should be. But uh, yes, hello Neville. How you doing? How you doing? I'm glad you're well. Yeah. So I was just saying, you know, woke up probably on the wrong side of the bed or something. A bit of a headache. Uh, it's a bit overcast today. Just just not feeling 100. Uh, and I sort of skipped a few tasks that I was supposed to do early on in the day. And I've just basically wrote off today as a as a lazy day now. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to. I didn't want to not do this. I wanted to continue with this. So today we're going to be taking a look at two watches that have just come in. I showed them on yesterday's Instagram live, uh, which, by the way, went incredibly well. So thank you for everyone who participated in that. Me and John at Antique Watch. I think we were live for nearly two hours, uh, which was insane. Um, so it went very, very well. Talking about all kinds of stuff. Loads of questions, which is exactly what we were hoping for, because we had no format. Um, at all for what we were going to do <laughs> so that went very very well hello William how are you doing thank you for joining us um, so guys let me know what you're wearing today as I said right now on the wrist is the Kokota really enjoying this piece still probably going to get a couple more straps eventually uh, to play around with I think a brown would look amazing on this so we'll see also you can see my tan line like I have got a ridiculous ridiculous tan at the moment from all that sun so I shouldn't complain too much. Uh, I have enjoyed the sun. A uh, bit like me yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I think we're all going to have them, right? It's it's very normal during these during this lockdown for us to occasionally wake up and just not feel like today is the day. You know what I mean? And that was the day for me. Um, first week of this, it was definitely like that, but I've been good since then. But today, just not so much. But hey, it happens. Happens to all of us. It's just a case of cracking on and uh, still doing as much as you possibly can regardless right just battling through it so today we're going to be taking a look at two watches that just come in um by the way i've got quite a few more watches coming in uh, hopefully a few of them landing tomorrow um involving a vintage tudor a vintage inspired watch uh, that looks like a very very old submariner um so that should be really cool uh yeah so quite a few pieces coming in i've been purchasing a lot more um because you guys have been buying up the watches that are under a thousand pounds and I'm starting to run out, um, so I'm purchasing in as many as possible that I think you guys are going to like and that are to the standard that I'd want to bring to you guys. So yeah, should be good. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, Hoyer on the left, Vostok on the right. Very nice. Two polar opposites. Very very cool. Uh, Williams doing good. Good. I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're doing well. Let me know what you're wearing. So let's crack on with it. So as you can see by the title and probably the photo that was in the thumbnail, I have got an orange turtle um which is the first one they ever did but i thought we'd quickly start with the other two variants i currently have so my most worn one that i have at the moment is this one the seiko turtle save the ocean there's a reason there's no bracelet on it we'll get to that in a minute um with the shock fin counter weight to the second hand and on the dial right there as you can see absolutely gorgeous watch love it i've been really enjoying it um it is a very very cool watch and then i've got the other save the ocean right here which i keep going on about these watches um and this is the we'll call it the james cameron <laughs> uh because the dial gradients from black 
uh, to the very light blue just like the ocean and just like the uh, deep sea James Cameron so really cool pieces and I've added another one so let's get that now these came yesterday and I have done a full unboxing and first impressions video which is currently being edited um, by the gentleman who's going to be basically doing the edits for me uh, from from here on in hopefully we've still got to come to some sort of agreements and how it's all going to work um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of videos in the pipeline in terms of thought. There's two videos in the pipeline in terms of actually just being edited, which is the unboxing and first impressions of this and the Christopher Ward I'm about to show you. So we'll see how they go. It was all done in one take. It's going to be edited by him. It's uh, it's definitely a first, so we will see. Um, how are you doing, Craig? How are you doing? Wearing your steel and gold Tudor day date. Yes, I saw you post that. It's a gorgeous piece. I think massively underrated. Um, so let's open this and show you the Seiko Turtle uh, Orange, aka the Nemo, uh, whereas my dad nicknamed it the Tango, and I think the Tango is actually a bit more fitting, but it's known as the Nemo, so we should probably stick with that. So here it is, again let's get this a bit more in focus. So with it comes um, all the stuff you'd expect, you know, the... The boring stuff we all know, the guarantee card, everything like that, which is good because the guarantee cards on almost all Seikos are never filled out. And the reason being, the retailers just don't bother. Um, you just go based on your uh, your receipt, which is annoying. But this is why my Overtail has no bracelet on it. So here it is. So it's quite unusual because anyone who's owned a Seiko Turtle, usually it just comes with either the bracelet or the rubber strap. There's not usually both. Whereas this comes with the bracelet and with a very nice blue rubber strap, which matches the blue of the orange. Uh, the blue of the watch, the blue of the orange. How does that make any sense? Uh, <laughs> so here it is. Absolutely awesome. Um, I purchased this with, with the hope of liking it, but deep down, I really thought I was going to hate it. I mean, a bright orange watch with blue. I mean, it's just not the kind of colour combination you usually think of. However, having it now for a couple of days, or, or two days, I think, I love it. I think it's, it's so, so cool. And I'm starting to realise that for me personally, I'm liking the different watches. The watches that are just a bit more unusual, not the stuff you usually see. And I think that's because I've now been doing this, you know, three or four years and I've handled and experienced a lot of watches, thankfully, and I've sold many, um, you know, mainstream brands and also very quirky stuff. I'm always drawn to the unusual and also the 70s design. That's kind of what pulls me in. This is kind of a mixture of both. You know, you've got that 70s design with the turtle case uh, and the styling, but then you've got just absolutely wacky with a bright orange dial, which let me get in nice and close. Uh, here we go. Which is just this beautiful finish. And you've got the blue on the bezel as well. So again, a combination you wouldn't usually consider to work well. But it's awesome. It is awesome. And it's very polarizing, which is why I like it even more. The only thing I'm not liking so far, and I'm, it may change and I'll, I'll give it a real risk time. You know, I'm going to give it a good couple of weeks before doing a full review, is the Cyclops. So on the other ones... On the other ones, there is no Cyclops over the date. And I have to be honest, I think I prefer it without the Cyclops. I don't have anything against Cyclops, you know, I, I don't mind them. I'm not like one of those people who like, you can't have a magnifier over any dates and all that. It doesn't bother me. However, on this model, for some reason it does. Maybe because it's elongated over both, a day and a date, it just looks, it just looks very long. <laughs> and very unnecessary. I mean, I can read the time and date on that. But maybe I'll be grateful for it when I'm like 50 if I still own this watch. Um, so... Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. What's everyone saying? Uh, you're wearing your OP36 white uh, grape dial today. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Grape is massively underrated within the Rolex lineup. I think it's gorgeous. Um, it's a great combo. Gold, gold and green. Uh, like gold and green. Yeah, it's a surprising combo. Definitely. The green and blue. Uh, the orange and blue, even. I actually like the double magnified date window. Yeah, this is what I mean. It's very... It's sort of... Um, you either like it or you don't, right? And right now, I'm not a fan. And again, you know, I, I'm going to give this watch some real wrist time and some real wear. Um, and then I'll do a full review. But as of this moment, I'm not a fan of it. I prefer it without. Definitely a Marmite watch. I personally love it. Yeah, it is exactly that, Chris. It's exactly that. It is the kind of watch you either love or you hate. 
I don't think you're. I don't think you're going to be in the middle ground. I don't think you can be neutral on this, um, because I was buying it with the hope of being neutral, um, but with knowing I was going to go either one of either way. Right? I was either going to love it or I was going to hate it, and I'm I'm glad so far. I'm loving it. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> someone did jokingly say to me, um, because she knows I've got an insane tan at the moment compared to what I usually am. I I am <laughs> I'm the whitest person in the world. Right now, my arms are a bit brown, thankfully, for, from the sun. So this orange doesn't look so harsh. Whereas she's made a good point that when I'm back to my pasty whiteness, this orange might be a bit harsh against my skin tone, which is a very, very, very good point. So this may become a very summery watch for me, um, but we'll have to wait and see. So when I go back to being pale as anything and put this on, I might, it might just be so... It might be a bit too bright, so we will see. We will see. It's like yellow gold. Yellow gold I can wear, but it depends on the yellow, right? So it depends on if it's a more vintage yellow where it's a bit more coppery, so it's more of a warmer tone towards rose. Then I can pull it off, whereas when it's bright yellow gold and I've not got any tan at all, it is far too harsh. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. I really like the broad Cyclops too. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is one of those things. I think if I did a poll about the Cyclops, I reckon it'd be like 50-50. I think people would be really down the middle, um, you know, overall. You either like it or you don't. Um, again, I, I'm hoping it warm it warms up to me. Um, I just don't think it's necessary, and I think it might be because I've got so used to it without. Right? I've been wearing turtles for many years. Actually, I've owned. Thank. Uh, luckily, you know, I've been able to own all of the variants: the black, uh, the blue, the one with the gold, uh, which was probably my favourite. Um, although this is definitely winning so far, but I just think it's a lot nicer without the Cyclops. And I know. Um, I know, Craig, you've got the Samurai version of this watch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, really gorgeous style, really gorgeous look. I just don't think it needs it, right? I, I, it's not bad. I just don't think it needs it. I think it's fine with that. But we will see. We'll see what I end up thinking with a full review. Let me show you on wrist. Um, as I said, right now, we're in the Gekota. Really enjoying this piece. I'm going to put it on a brown strap at some point uh, when I get a bit bored. And we will we'll switch it up. But for £139, this watch is ridiculously good. Now, these Seiko Turtles, uh, these are limited edition. So I don't know if you can see on the back. Uh, probably not. No, nope. it does say limited edition. It doesn't say how many buy. Um, so I have absolutely no idea how many of this is actually limited by. So if you guys and girls have any clue and any way of proving it, uh, because there's a couple of places where it's like 2,000, a couple of places are apparently 8,000. I mean, no one seems to know. Um, but you can still get these on eBay. Uh, you can't get them from authorized places anymore. They're completely gone. However, they are appearing on eBay anywhere between four and five hundred pounds. It seems like more, more four fifty to five hundred. Um, I have no idea where this is going to go. This is going to be one of those watches where it could be worth a lot of money in many years, or it could be worth the exact same. I don't think it will go down. I think it's that kind of watch, and it's the same with all the turtles. You know, that's why I've got three of them so far. I really enjoy them, and I'm I'm wearing them and buying them because I enjoy them. Now, granted, they will sit at the back of the safe for some time, and they may end up for sale at some point, but right now they're just they're being enjoyed. I'm, I'm enjoying them. And there it is. I really like it. Most lights, this blue does look black, um, or it's a very, very navy blue, whereas when you get it in certain lights, there we go, that demonstrated it perfectly, even though this is the most awkward angle I think I've ever been in. Jesus. Ow, my arm. <laughs> um, you can see in this angle the blue pops. You know, it's It's a very diverse blue. Which I think adds to the charm. But it's quite nice that it comes with all these extras. Um, this, the bracelet I've just taken off my other turtle. Because I've really... I'm starting to wear this bracelet in. Um, you know, it's got scratches and stuff. So why scratch perfectly fine bracelets that are completely stickered? You know, just keep them, keep them stickered. Um, but I, I will give this rubber strap a try at some point. But right now I have no intentions to. So yeah, that's the turtle. And we will move on to the other watch. What do you guys think of it? What do you guys think of it? Let's see what people are saying. Uh, absolutely, James. The OP 34 and 36 mil are majorly underrated in my humble opinion. Yeah, no, I agree completely. I um, I would like to add an OP uh, 36 mil at some point. I think it's a, I think it's a gorgeous watch. Probably the white dial. Though I am torn between the 34 and the 36 because the 34 has got the single line battens. Uh, whereas the 36, for some strange reason, they decided to put double line battens. 
uh, for the indices uh, for the 12, 3, 6 and 9 I think and it, I just don't know why you know it's the perfect size at 36 uh, 34 is fine as well but the 36 is perfect and then they just go and make it that little bit different uh, it's just there was no need there was no need now the next piece da, 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 da. it's not crushed the Kokota even though it's got a sapphire crystal I'm sure it survived this Christopher Ward box is quite long and it's actually a lovely box this is an amazing box and we'll show you in a second uh, I do love that blue dial on the samurai yeah it's a gorgeous piece it's a gorgeous gorgeous piece I think and I, I could be wrong but I just have a feeling this is going to become one of the most popular uh, dials because it is so different the, the texturing is ridiculous I mean look at it how cool is that and the the bezel as well it's got like a record I am going to have to get a King Turtle at some point, just to try them out, see what they're all about, um, because people are giving them praise, so I guess I should try them. And they do this in a King Turtle variant, I just don't know if I want the exact same one. I mean, they're, I think you can get them for about five, 600 quid for the King Turtles, I think they're around £500. Pounds. I just don't know how I feel about £200 pounds extra for a ceramic bezel and a sapphire crystal. Are they nice additions? 100%, like 100%, no question. Does it bother me though? Not really. I mean, yes, Hardlex does scratch, and I've had Hardlex before, and I've had an SKX that I owned for many years, and I did end up scratching it multiple times. But it's not its not the be-all or end-all for me. I, I, I don't mind, and I don't really care. Ceramic bezel, of course it's nice, but this, this texture you wouldn't be able to get with ceramic, or at least I don't think you would. Um, not, not for 500 quid anyway. I mean, the, the R&D to go into making it like a record would probably, probably cost a lot. But I, I prefer this to be honest. What do you guys think? Think you're on a, with a winner with that one? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Certainly wears nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. It's going to stay in the collection for a while, that's for sure. And for some reason, I'm getting really into turtles. I've made a list of the six I want to own, and right now I've got three uh, of the six. So, I mean, <laughs> I am going to end up owning all six that I want to own and have a mini turtle collection. I can go to the red bars and stuff with my with all my turtles. I'll be like the only guy there with six turtles. <laughs> um, I really don't mind a Cyclops. I love my date, uh, date just, and in my opinion, Rolex probably do the best Cyclops of them all, and probably should be considered uh, considering they started it. Yep, yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, the the Cyclops on the Rolex are, 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 are proportionately perfect. They're um, they know what they're doing. You know, they've been doing it so long. There is no question. Uh, I missed my OP. I should have sold it. I had the green. Yes, I saw your photo of the green. You had it on a, I think you had it on a brown strap, uh, the photo I saw. Gorgeous. Um, and you know, I'm not a green person. I, I don't I don't think I own a green watch. Like, personally, I don't think I've ever owned a green watch. I'm just not a, don't like green. <laughs> I don't know why. don't know why, but that does look good. Uh, mine is a double baton dial James I think uh, I had to look at the 34 but once I tried 36 yeah so I don't know why they did the double baton I have absolutely no idea there was no need on the 36 and it's the only thing that sort of puts me off of it and also the price tag I'm not there yet you know for the personal collection <laughs> that's money that's much better off in the business right now have you spotted the shark fin on the save the ocean dial yes yeah I am um, I don't know if you've uh, seen, Craig, on, on the website there's a section called blog, and in there I've done some in-depth reviews and some really nice macro shots. I think I photographed it, actually, for the for the last one. So you've got it on the dial and you've got it on the counterweight uh, as well, and I managed to capture it with with both in, in focus at the same time. It was pretty cool. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's have a look. It's a lot to ask for a sapphire and ceramic. I mean, it is and it, it, is and it isn't, right? It's... It, I think where it's a lot to ask for um, for sapphire and ceramic is when we compare it to the turtle in general, right? So if you've been buying Seikos for years, you know that what you get for your money is within that range of you know 200 to 400 pounds usually. So spending 500 quid and getting the sapphire and the ceramic in terms of other watch brands, if you put it in like a line, it's still incredible value. You, you know, there's no denying that it's it's comparable to Oris. It's, it's comparable to the Longines Conquest, you know, it's, it's comparable to all these things. So when you put it there at that price range, it's very, very, very good value. No question. However, when you compare it to its own lineup, <laughs> it's that's when it starts becoming a bit of a bit of a question, really, of whether it is worth it. So, um, yeah, that, that's sort of where I stand with it on paper. And as a watch comparatively to other watch brands, 
is is a value you know it's a value play 100 percent. but when you compare it to what you can get within its own lineup of brand uh, of watch i just i don't know i just don't know how i feel saying that i'll have to get one i'll have to try it out and then maybe my opinion will completely change um how you doing angel um do you think uh, it would be a good idea to buy a 1980s day just with everything happening right now. Do you think Rolex prices would drop for all the pieces? Um, it's, it, we spoke about that a couple of days ago, and uh, we did on the Instagram Live yesterday as well. If you're buying a watch purely for its value, so... Uh, getting something just to put on screen whilst we talk. So, if you're... Let's say you're in the market for this watch, or, or the, the date just you're talking about, right? You're in the market, you want to buy it, you really like it, you're just waiting for the right piece at the right price. Let's say you found the right piece, and this is a watch that you hope to keep forever, right? Or a very, very long time. The price almost becomes irrelevant at that point, as long as it's in line with whatever the market is at that moment in time. Because if you're buying it to keep, the price don't matter, right? Because you're not going to get rid of it. Now, obviously, if you do, that's when the price comes into play, and as long as you bought it at the right price, uh, at the right time, then you can't really go wrong. So what I mean by that is buy what you like, right? Right now, the market is is down. It is down. It's not down by a lot, but it is down. So now is a good time to buy uh, in general. It's a buyer's market. But that comes in with a million other questions, right? So without knowing all the context and everything like that, and only you'd know some of this context, like your financial situation and how much of an impact that would have and the future of your financial situation during this outbreak and, and this this situation, you know, you've got to consider all those factors in, which I'm sure you would have, as any responsible adult and human does when they consider buying something, especially if this value. You know, um, if you've only just got that amount of money altogether, don't be putting it on a watch, you know. <laughs> um, and also, the 1980s date just are classics. As long as it's the right market price, you're fine. You know, it comes down to cost to wear as well. So let's say you're going to keep it for five years and you end up selling it and you lose money. Everyone goes, oh no, I lost money. Let's say you lose £500 and everyone shits the bed when they hear that. They go, oh, I've lost £500 on a Rolex. And it's like, okay, but you've owned it for five years. So you've technically only paid £100 a year to own and enjoy something, wear it, scratch it, use it, and then sell it. What else in the whole world can you do that with? So... Gaining money, losing money, holding value, I just I just think it's an old conversation. I don't think it's a conversation that really matters too much anymore as a collector. Now, if you're wanting to get into the trade and you're wanting to become a dealer, then definitely, you know, jump, jump in, learn, experiment, do all those sort of things, learn what's a trade price and what's a customer price and all those kind of things and, and work that way. But I just think it's a conversation that we're going to be having hopefully less and less after this because people are going to realize these are expensive toys. You do not need a watch. They are not investments. They are toys. They're investments for people in the industry, like myself, because it's what we make our living on, right? But that's through years and years of experience and years and years of, you know, research and trial and error and losing a load of money as well. You know, you don't always make money on watches. Um, that's where it comes into play. So if you're a collector and you're wanting to buy a watch, buy it because you want to buy the watch, not because you think it's going to be worth more or worth less or anything like that. Buy it because you want it. I think that's where the, hopefully the conversation is going to be going in general as all this finishes because people will start to realise this is an expensive toy. Buy it as such. You know, don't put your eggs in this basket kind of thing. So, uh, hopefully that answers your question. If it's a nice example, you're paying for the example. You, you know, you've got to remember that. If you might be able to find what... I say this all the time as well. You will find cheaper. Let's say I've got that... The Let's say I've got a watch for sale. If you look hard enough, you'll find it cheaper. Every single watch. But it's about what you're buying, who you're buying from, and that price doesn't represent the condition, right? You might pay more because the condition is better. That's just how it goes. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna price match a, a five, uh, a watch that's five years older, battered, has no box and paper, so on and so on. Like you get the point. So, so buy what you like, um, and buy right, and buy from the right person. That's the important thing. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Really great priest. Um, what's everyone saying? Great here. We're doing the best we can at this time. Yep, definitely. That's all we can do. I haven't seen much change um, in the market on older Rolex pieces, to be fair. There's been a small dip, but again, you know, it's across the board and it's not really representative of anything. I mean, the, the market is what, what the market does, right? Um, there's not really... <laughs> 
You, we could read into it all day. Um, however, I just don't believe you can. I think we're going to see ups and downs, ups and downs for the next two years, really, in the market, realistically. So if you're in the trade like I am, it's a case of buying right or as best you can at that point. So like right now, I'm trying to buy based on right now and I'm trying to sell based on right now. But in two months, I'll be doing the same for that moment in time. And again, in a year and so on for the next two years, probably before we can start getting back to sort of trying to forecast, which again, doesn't really exist in itself. But it's, it's interesting for sure. Totally agree, James. As long as you enjoyed the watch uh, wearing it, you're all good. 100%. That's it. That's a real collector. Craig, I know you're a real collector. Anyway, let's get on to this Christopher Ward. Da -da -da. So this box is awesome. Look at it. You got a wood frame here. You got like a soft cushion thing. Slides open. You got a cleaning cloth, which is what this is. I can never get it out. There we go. And then under all this is the watch. Now the watch does come with its chronometer certificate because it's a chronometer. And let's take a closer look at this. Amen watches for wearing and enjoying whilst creating memories. Watches are not price speculation if you're a collector. Yeah, exactly. And I get asked very regularly, um, is this a good price? And they will link me to a watch. And I'll be like, yeah, based on the current market or no, based on the current market. Or, you know, it, it depends on what you're buying, blah, blah, blah. And I give all these answers. And then oftentimes I get a counter uh, question of, is this what trade would pay? And my first question is, well, are you trade? And they go, no. I'm like, well, why are you trying to get what trade would pay? Like, that's just just defeats the purpose. You're not going to be able to. <laughs> There's a reason why we pay what we pay. It's because we connect with the dealers and we know them. And we, we also all have to survive on the same thing. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting conversation I find myself having far too often. Far too often. So here it is. This is the Christopher Ward C60 uh, Trident Elite 1000 Limited Edition. And I absolutely love this. So, right there. Look at that. Look at that dial. So again, blue and orange. Apart from, this is orange. This is orange and blue. We've got blue and orange. Absolutely awesome. So, uh, where to begin with this? Well, it's the uh, C60 lineup, which uh, Christopher Ward have been doing for for many many years. It's kind of their their flagship range, really. Is what they've become known for. On this model, uh, it's the Elite 1000 because it's a thousand meters water resistant and it does include a helium escape valve right there. You've got a ceramic bezel with luminescence inlay, so all of what you see in white is luminescent. It's same on the dial, so there's a lot of lume on this watch. You've got the classic Trident counterweight with the orange tip and a lot of orange highlights on this, which is beautiful. Christopher Ward stayed at there uh, at 9 with the logo up there at 12. Quite a controversial thing, not everyone really likes it um to be honest i'm not too fussed i think it looks good uh you've got the date over there at three with a black box with white font slightly different it's paired on this rubber and canvas strap again blue and orange which matches perfectly and signed screw down crown limited to just 300 pieces tried it on the case back no exhibition case back being away inside here is the salia sw200 now, it's been brought to chronometer spec, uh, which is very impressive. So you're getting that reliability you'd hope for. Now, this is where this watch gets even cooler. This is grade 2 titanium. Now, let me move some things around because I've got no space. So, let's give it a wipe. Let me show you the level of finishing they have achieved with grade 2 titanium. Now, for those of you that know metals uh, or materials in general... Titanium is a very hard metal. It requires diamond tip tools uh, for polishing uh, and sort of cutting down and everything like that. So it's a much more difficult and usually costly process, even though titanium as a metal isn't that costly. But the, the sort of the reason often titanium watches are more expensive than stainless steel is not because of the metal, it's because of what it takes to get that metal in the shape of a watch and also finish to a level like this. Now, the interesting thing is the colour. So titanium is usually a very dark grey. However, here, the grey isn't that dark. I mean, I don't know if I can compare it very well. Of course, it's a different hue and you can kind of see. But it's not very, very dark grey, which uh, titanium usually is. So at first, and also the weight, I don't know why or how, but the weight isn't that light. Um, 
So they've, they've achieved a lot of things here, which I'm not too sure how they have. <laughs> but it just looks very, very cool. Quick release strap. Very nice rubber strap. As I said, helium escape valve giving it a thousand meters water resistant, which you will never need ever <laughs> unless you're attaching it to a ship or something or a submarine. And let me show you on wrist. You've got 42 millimeter case size. I'll give you the dimensions because uh, I've got them down here. Uh, 42 millimeter case size, a 49.5 millimeter look to look, so just shy of 50 millimeters. You've got 14.5 mil thick and 22 mil looks. So in terms of dimensions, 42 mil is is good it's okay and just under 50 mil lug tip to lug tip it is also fine i think if you've got a wrist similar size to mine mine's six and three quarter inch you can get away with it i think six and a half inch you can just about get away with it anything less than that it's um yeah you're not gonna you're not gonna get away with that size but there it is gorgeous piece I can't get enough of it to be honest. I think massively underrated. And the price of this is going to be less than a thousand pounds. Now, when you consider what you get for that, and when you compare it to other brands that are offering this same spec line, that's a lot of value for money. However, it gets even better. This is limited to 300 pieces, as I said. And this is priced less than what Christopher Ward offer in this same range, non limited edition that you can go buy right now. So you can either spend more <laughs> with Christopher Ward and get the non-limited edition versions, which aren't as cool in my opinion, or spend less, a fair bit less, and get a limited edition one with only 300 in the whole world. It's kind of a no-brainer. I don't think this is going to last long because the guy who's a guy or girl who's looking for this this reference uh, of watch, this is a this is an attractive proposal. So it looks really cool. Uh, it's made of grade two titanium, and the bezel is ceramic. So really cool piece. See what you guys are saying. Uh, Amen. Watches are wearing, enjoying, whilst creating memories. Yep, we already covered that. My bad. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think Christopher Ward have got some great watches, but just can't do it personally. I hate the name at nine. It throws everything off for me. A lot of people have that complaint. You're not alone with that. Um, when they first came out with this new update uh, of design, I wasn't a fan. Though having quite, having had you know a few Christopher Awards with this design, I've got over it, over it very quickly. I don't mind it. Um, it does separate the symmetry, uh, which is one of the things that I don't like. But I think it's not. It's not terrible. I mean, did it look better before? Yes. Did they need to change it? No. Um, but did they? Yes. <laughs> now we have to live with it. <laughs> But in terms of the watch and the value for money, it's great. I think where Christopher Ward sort of go wrong, in my opinion, is too many SKUs. And I think it's the thing that's going to really screw them one day. Um, because it's all well and good offering diversity and options, but you can go far too far, which in my opinion, they have done. I mean, you don't need 80 color options of the same watch. You know, it's just not necessary. But cool looking piece. Cool looking piece. I know where I'd be coming to purchase one. <laughs> Very good, very good. So they're the two latest pieces that have arrived. The Christopher Ward and the Seiko Turtle. Now, as I said, I've got quite a few more pieces coming in because you guys are buying up the sub £1,000 watches. It seems to be what you're all enjoying at the moment or can afford at the moment, which is obviously fair. So I've got quite a few more of those coming in, both vintage and modern. So we will see. And I'll show them on different live streams and everything like that. But it's a cool watch. It's a cool watch. How you doing, John? How you doing? Yeah, me and John had a really good live stream on Instagram yesterday. It was very enjoyable. A lot of people got involved. It was good. Uh, I like it a lot, although I'd go for the 38mm in steel. Yeah, I think the, the offer that they have of 38 in steel is great. And for me personally, on my wrist size, I think the 38 would be better suited than the 42. But it wears well. All considered. All considered, it wears well. I agree with everything you said. It's just if I wait two months, I want to know, will I end up paying less for it? Uh, that's why I'm not sure if I should pull the trigger. To be honest, the, the thing is, um, you might wait two months and then that example that you're looking for is gone because someone else didn't want to wait two months and has purchased it. So you might save £100, but is it worth losing that very good example that you found that ticks all the boxes for you um, just, just to say potentially £100? You've got to really ask yourself that question, you know, and also you've got to remember 
asking me or asking anyone, asking someone who's been in the trade 50 years, it doesn't matter. Not one of us has a glass ball and not one of us will know what's going to happen. You know, it's like right now we're waiting for the announcement that they're probably going to extend this for three more weeks, this lockdown here in the UK. Could that have an impact? It might. Could it be negative or positive? I, I don't know. Um, the thing is, no one truly knows. So what I'd say is, if you like the watch and you've got the funds for it and it's something you intend to keep, go for it. You know, if you found the right example and you found the right one that ticks all your boxes and the right seller as well that you trust, you know, there's not really any more you can ask for at that point. You know, you, you might wait two months and then not be able to find it for another two years. Waiting can sometimes be the death of deals. So, you know, and I have a lot of people doing it with with watches I've got for sale right now. They're, they're sitting there waiting because they think it's going to go down more and the market's going to change. And I've had three watches sell that people were waiting for and they've all contacted me going, I should have waited. And I was like, I did say, you know, if you've found the right one, it ticks the boxes for you, go for it. So that's my advice. Um, if it's if it ticks the boxes, go for it, man. Like, don't don't do this whole waiting game of trying to predict predict the future or find out who else can predict the future. It's just it, it's worthless, really. It's um, yeah, you're gonna regret. It. You you will regret it. But the cool watches. Um, I think it's good value for money. Uh, the Christopher Ward, yeah. In terms of value for money, when we're talking value for money purely um, on on a spec sheet, you know, this is comparable to the Planet Oceans. Um, and when you try and compare this to the Planet Ocean, Blue Dial, uh, Titanium on a rubber strap, I mean that the price difference is, is mind-blowing. Um, of course, there are differences. Of course, the coaxial movement. Of course, all these other factors. Now, you could go as far as saying the, the coaxial movement that you can get in the Seamaster equivalent, uh, the, the Planet Ocean equivalent, actually is going to make it less of a deal. Because that Planet Ocean, with its coaxial movement, has to go back to Amiga every time for a service and having worked for an AD of Amiga you know seeing their price prices for service you're better off with a Christopher Ward you know or an ETA is what I'm trying to say so yeah don't let that don't let that hold you out but yeah so they're the two latest pieces as I said I've got more incoming and they are just cool watches so guys we've been live for almost 40 minutes I think I'm going to call it there um I just really wanted to show these two off individually. As I said, I did record a unboxing and first impressions of both of these. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. They're currently being edited, so I don't know which one's going to come first. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out and keep an eye out for what else is coming. I will post it on Instagram and things like that. You guys know I've already had interest because I sort of uh, sneakily said a vintage Tudor's incoming. I've already had two people ask which one and showing some interest, so you never know couple of them might go before they even make it to the site um so yeah definitely get in contact if you've got anything you want or anything like that and i think i'm gonna call it there so john says uh, lots of retail home therapy going on some are still getting paid and want to purchase yeah exactly exactly that is exactly true and we are here for those who want to do that and of course if you just want to talk watches or you just want to get involved that's what these are for um but yeah thank you very much for joining guys i am gonna call it a day there I think I'm just going to watch Netflix for the rest of the day. I will not lie. I want a lazy day. I think we all deserve one. <laughs> so thank you very much for tuning in. I will see you all again tomorrow with hopefully some more watches that have just arrived. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you very much. Take care and bye-bye.